Hello and welcome. In this video, we will be looking at the requirements of a good summary. That is, what are the things that are required of you in writing a good summary? Going, before actually going to the requirements, what, first of all, is a summary? Now, a summary is simply a condensation of a given passage. Now, what do I mean by this? That is, stripping the passage bare to its bare necessities. Reduction in length and form is what we call a summary. Now, what are some of the things that is required in writing a good summary? Number one is brevity. Brevity is actually the soul of summary because the need for summary is actually the need to be brief. So there is no room for verbosity or loquaciousness when summary is involved. So you have to be very brief with what you are writing. Number two is relevance. Now, if a passage is summarized, whatever it is that may be um, the passage may be whittled down to must still be relevant to the passage itself. For instance, you cannot just cut, let's say, a passage of six paragraphs. It's not reduced to two paragraphs. Now, that is not a summary because it should not reflect everything in the passage. So, really remember that whatever it is that you summarize must still be relevant to the whole passage itself. Number three is satisfactory courage. Now, similar to that of relevance, whatever it is that you summarize from a particular passage must satisfactorily cover the bulk of what you have in that passage itself. So, the key or main or salient points must reflect in the summary. So it should not look like a wishy-washy thing simply because you are asked to summarize. So the, the summary must satisfactorily cover every aspect of the initial passage. Number four is clarity. The summary must be done in such a manner that it is clear enough for people to be able to understand that what you have summarized represents the passage that it was summarized from. So, you must avoid words that would um, model up the whole summary writing process. Now, note, it is important for you to learn how to paraphrase because quoting exactly from the main passage verbatim will cost you some marks. So, please learn to paraphrase, that is, use your own words that are related to what you have been asked to, um, to summarize. And finally, avoid repetition. Now, Repeating what has been said in the main passage may actually not go well for you in a summary passage. So please try to avoid unnecessary repetitions in your summary writing. Now we move on to patterns observed in summary writing, especially in SSC summary passages. Now, these patterns are divided into five. Number one is the topic sentence patterns. Number two is the section-based pattern. Number three is the listing pattern. And number four is the mixed pattern. And finally, number five is comparison contrast pattern. Now, these patterns would be explained with um, adequate examples. Now, starting with the first pattern. The topic sentence pattern is one, as the name implies, that is based on the topic sentences in each paragraph. Now, note, in writing, every paragraph in English language has a topic sentence. Now, what is a topic sentence? A topic sentence is one that serves like a header for the whole paragraph. In fact, it is the central point that the paragraph aims to talk about. And every other sentence in that paragraph is only trying to shed more light or expatiate the topic sentence. Now, number two, when we look at the section-based pattern, now, this is a situation whereby the summary is divided into two sections or more. That is, one part, maybe, maybe it may be a cause and effect passage. And so, one part is divided, is uh, made to represent the cause, while the other one is made to represent the effect. So, these summary patterns may actually be section-based. So please bear in mind, number three is a listing pattern. And in this case, 
you are told to list out the points as may be outlined in various paragraphs. So it is easy for you to understand that in listing, you must follow the rules. Now, they make it easier for you by giving you questions such as, in, what, in five sentences, one for each paragraph, list out the points that have been outlined to back up these uh, assertions. So it is important for you to just know that all you have to do is look at each paragraph and identify the points that is being made or the main point that is being made and paraphrase it in your own words. And number four is the mixed pattern. Now, the mixed pattern, as the name suggests, is one that inculcates all the other forms of the summary pattern. So you have a, a summary that includes both the topic sentence pattern, the section-based pattern, the listing pattern, and even the comparison contrast pattern all lumped together in one summary passage. So please bear in mind, this type of summary inculcates every other aspect of summary writing. And finally, is the comparison contrast pattern. Now, this is often used in an argumentative kind of a passage. So you have a compare and contrast kind of scenario that helps to shed light on the topic or the subject matter itself. Now, the comparison and contrast pattern is used when um, the writer intends to actually present the two sides to an issue. In our next video, we'll be taking model summary questions and answering them together. Thank you.